Hi everybody, it's Fandy, your librarian, and today I'm going to show you how to search through Google Books and WorldCat simultaneously. For those of you who've worked with me before, um, you'll remember that these are two different ways of searching books, but they search opposite of each other. So when you search both of them, it's kind of like you're getting the two halves to a whole. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. First things first, we're going to open up WorldCat, which is a database that we have here. So we're going to go to Research Guides by Subject, Art, Art, and Databases, okay, and WorldCat. WorldCat, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a catalog of libraries worldwide. So this, with this, you're actually searching just as if you were searching our catalog or a database. The other thing we're going to open up, we're going to open a new tab and we're going to Google Google Books. Google Books is a subset of Google, and so it's actually just searching inside of books. Now, the reason why I do both of these at the same time is because with Google Books, it's actually going to search inside of the book. But if my words appear only once or they're in passing or something like that, I've got to go through the whole book. Sometimes there's not a preview so I can see inside of it. So it's searching that one way. With WorldCat, I can actually search inside of records for the book, but I can't actually see inside the book. So there's pluses and minuses to everything. And that's why I say with both of these, you've got the two halves to a perfect whole. For this one, I'm going to do uh, my favorite artist, Mary Cassatt, and in this, I can use my, um, let me make this a little bigger. I can use my quotation marks. I can use my wild cards. I can also use my Boolean operators, which I can't do in Google Books. So I'm looking for information on this artist. I'm going to start with those words in the subject. If she is listed in the subject for the book, then the book is primarily about this artist. Notice that I put in the or, that's the Boolean searching. So I can search for it this way, or I can search for her name to be last name, comma, first name. Typically, when we're doing a, um, a record for an author or an artist or creator, it's last name, comma, first name. Now, if I was looking for them inside of the book, or let's say if they mention her name in the abstract or something like that, then I would put it this way because this is how we write it in paragraphs or sentences. I'm also looking specifically for information about a painting of hers called Breakfast in Bed. It's one of my favorite pieces. But you'll notice that I'm also, again, using my quotation marks because that keeps that phrase together. I don't want it looking for the word breakfast, just anywhere it wants to. Typically, when you're looking for an artwork specifically, um, you'll leave that in keyword because unless the entire book is about that particular piece of artwork, it may not be listed in the record. And that's one of the difficulties in researching for art. If you're looking for a specific piece, you know, that, that gets a little bit more difficult. Sometimes they don't list all the artwork that they use. Um, so that's what we're gonna start with. I do want to limit the language of the book to English. And then I'm gonna scroll down and my subtype limits, I'm gonna limit the audience to not juvenile, which will take out the children's books. And content is not fiction. And trust me, you will be amazed at what they will write a fiction book about. So having these limiters is very, very helpful in reducing your time of, of scrolling through and trying to figure out is this you know, some 1980s romance novel or, or whatever that's historical or something. Um, and we're going to do a search. Now you'll notice I, I didn't get a whole lot. Okay, so I'm going to click on this one. And it's going to take me to the record for the book. Now remember, I keep saying record, record, record. This is what a librarian or cataloger has entered in for the book. So you get whatever they've put in. But for this one, we're getting the table of contents, which it looks like they have a chapter on specifically the painting I'm looking for, which is why I'm seeing this book. 
I get a quick abstract of the book. Sometimes it depends on what they have for it. Sometimes you get a sentence or two. Sometimes you get an entire paragraph, but it kind of breaks down what the book is about. And you get named person. Sometimes you get other subject terms and stuff like that. Because we told it uh, named person is one of the subject lines that they have. It's a separate type of subject line, but it is a subject line. You'll see that we put our Mary Cassatt in here just like this. That's why we're seeing this particular book. But I can't see inside of the book. I can't really tell what's going on. So one of the things I can do if I want is I can go in and go to Google Books and look and see if they maybe have that book in here and see if I can see a preview of it. Maybe even do some searching inside of it. One of the biggest helps for that is that if I know maybe there's just one particular chapter out of a book that I want, all I have to do is go into that book if it gives me the preview and see if I can't look at the table of contents because that's going to tell me the page numbers for that chapter. And then all I'm going to do is do an interlibrary loan for that one chapter. They'll scan it, send it to me as a PDF. I'll get it in a couple of days. Okay. But how does it work the other way? Because as you saw, we only got two books. The reason for that is because I put in the title of the artwork that I'm looking for, okay? There are tons of books that talk about this piece, but it may not be in the record. So I'm looking at now books specifically about her. I can put in different things. I can put in women and child or something else, but if I'm looking for a specific piece of artwork, I'm gonna have to do more digging. That's the other side of doing art research. That's what makes it a little tricky and special. Again, I can look into these books and see, you know, what they say, what does it have, all of that information. But I can also go back into Google Books and do a search for Okay, you'll notice here that I put in her name just like this because it's searching inside of the book, it's searching inside of the text. And when we do a person's name inside of the text, this is how we write it. I'm not using my ands or ors because Google doesn't recognize those, but it will recognize the quotes. So now what it's doing is it's actually looking inside of these books for my words. So I can see that, oh, this one on one page talks, mentions that painting. And then if it's got a preview, I can actually click on it and search inside of it. Okay. That's very helpful if you're looking for information about a particular piece, because if they're talking about specific pieces, unless that entire book, like I said, is about that particular piece, it, it's not gonna be in the book record. Sometimes it's not even like listed on the list of illustrations in a book. That's kind of a newer thing that's come out. So being able to do this and search through here is great. One of my rules of thumb is if my search terms appear in the title of the book, like this one is, Mary Cassatt, when I do the search, I am going to take that out. I'm not, because I mean, that, that word is gonna be everywhere, right? So all I'm gonna do and I'm gonna see the number of pages that it's in. But you always have to remember, we're calling it breakfast in bed. They may be, they may call it that once and then refer to it later on as a different like breakfast or you know, image 42, stuff like that. So you can't always completely go by this. If these pages were part of the uh, actual preview of the book, we would be able to click in them and see the entire page, but it's not. But at least I know it's talking about my piece of artwork. And then if I need more information on the book, then I can actually take the title and go into WorldCat, because now I know that that book talks about my piece. 
And I can look up the record for the book because sometimes if you don't get a preview for the book, you, you know what's in there, but you don't know really what the book's about. Is it nonfiction? You know, is it for children? I don't know. So this will give me that type of information as well so that I can see a little bit more about the book. And if I decide I want this book, borrow from another library. My, my little magic button. Uh, sometimes when you're doing research in Google, you can't get your search terms tight enough to really pull up the exact item that you're looking for. Um, it's kind of a complicated process, but, um, you know, again, that's why with WorldCat, we can say, listen, these books have to be about Mary Cassatt. I don't care if somebody mentioned her once in passing because they studied under her or whatever, and it will pull those up. Sometimes you have to say, listen, I need, I need some titles where she's at least the, the subject. But again, it's all about knowing how something works and then using it in, in that direction as well. So continue on with the lesson and let me know if you have any questions.